Hello, biology peeps. Uh, yo for shizzle, you in the lane, hizzle. Um, I'm going to do a series of small video lectures that will accompany what you guys are doing um, in the book and online. Uh, so this first one's going to accompany Chapter 6, Lesson 1, which is about Darwin. Um, make sure you go and read through first. So if you haven't done that, back up. Go back and read through the chapter first and look at some of the pictures that I've added of ostriches and ostrich-like birds. Um, so we're going to first of all talk about Darwin. Uh, who was Charles Darwin? Um, he was a guy that grew up in England in the early 1800s, and he is known as the guy who came up with the theory of evolution. Famous for that, but not until he was basically dead, unfortunately. Um, evolution, the definition of it doesn't change that much, whether you're talking science or just English definition. And that is just a process where you have change over time. In this case, we're talking about change of organisms over time, but you could even talk about evolution in regards to how automobiles change over time or computer technology changes over time. Um, why do we have to learn that today? Like, why is it important to learn about evolution? Evolution is probably my favorite topic in biology. I love talking about evolution. I'm wicked bummed that I don't get to do this in person with you guys because I have some cool labs and stuff we could have done. So yeah, that stinks. Thanks, Corona. Um, the reason why it's important to learn about evolution is because it's a process that lets you see how living things can change. Why is that important today? Um, it teaches us how you can have pesticide resistance, disease resistant bacteria, and even how, for example, a virus can be in bats and now it has, oops, mutated and now it's in people. So it helps us solve a lot of modern day problems by understanding how evolution works. Um, how many of you, a lot I suspect, have ever felt like maybe you're not quite doing what your parents want you to do, maybe you know, you're kind of disappointing them? Yeah, Darwin went through that too. Um, Back in the early 1800s, it was the cool thing to do, like the best thing your son could ever become was either a doctor or a priest. Priest was definitely out. Darwin had a little bit of a bad boy reputation. Um, and he had wanted nothing to do with medical school. And keep in mind that medicine in the early 1800s was not the medicine of today. Darwin thought it was disgusting. You had things like leeches. That they would put on people because they thought you had toxins in your blood so they had to stick leeches on you to pull out all that you know poison or lobotomies like you go crazy and rather than putting on xanax or something they just know they just stick something up in your brain and that's supposed to fix the problem so darwin was kind of grossed out by the idea of being a doctor didn't want to do it at all he was a nature buff he liked to go out and bird watch and flip over rocks and look for salamanders and that kind of stuff which um i don't think his dad was too happy about that um but that's what he liked to do so he went on a five-year voyage with uh on a, on a boat big boat called the hms beagle this is a little history for you guys if you don't know what hms stands for because it doesn't tell you in the book it stands for his majesty's ship which is the designation for ships in England. Um, in, in the United States, we use like USS Arizona for United States ship. So he, anyway, he went on the HMS uh, Beagle for five years. And I think his dad thought this would be a, hey, you know, go get your head straight and come back mature and ready to be a real man or something. Anyway, it didn't work. Um, at the time, being a naturalist, which is what Darwin was, was kind of trendy, kind of like being a hippie free spirit, like being a barista or something cool, but, you know, not really a serious, you know, occupation or trade to get into. As it turned out, he became one of the most famous people in science, and, you know, his dad never really knew about it, which is unfortunate. I think he'd be proud if he had known of his discoveries today. So he went on the, the Beagle for five years. They visited f a three major continents. Africa, Australia, and South America. Pretty much staying within the 30 north, 30 south latitude on the equator. So think about how he might have came to some of his ideas a little differently if he'd went north or south of that because 
species diversity obviously gets less as you get away from the equator towards the pole. At the equator, you've got like all kinds of animals. By the time you get to the North Pole, it's pretty much just penguins. Um, and he might have had some real different theories had he seen, you know, what the world looked like in those places. Um, he took a lot of notes. I think he doodled. I think he did some drawings. Studied a lot of living things and found out how they were either similar or different as he visited all these places around the world. And he basically noticed that species varied in three major ways. They varied globally. So as he went on his trip around the world, he noticed that the species varied, were similar or were different around the world. The second one is he noticed that they varied locally. So if you look at a local population, say of finches, for example, even in the same environment, they look different. You've got like little goldfinches, you've got like the bigger cardinals. They vary even in the same environment. And the third way that he noticed is that they vary over time. So if you looked at fossils from the past, compared them with stuff of today, you could still see some similarities and differences with things from back then and even today. Um, and we'll talk about the variance of those things in the next lectures, but um, that's it for now. So go ahead and review the book and the pictures I've sent and then go and take the quiz.